Hi, in this particular tutorial, we're going to talk about how the census names units. As you can see, we have state names, we have county names, but once we get below that, we need to find a way to uniquely identify individual census enumeration units, such as the census tract, census block group, and even down to the census block here. Here, we're looking at a map of the United States here in our ArcGIS. You can see over and left here, I have my table of contents, and I've shown here my states. And if I right mouse click, open up my context menu and look at my open my app open my attribute table, you can see a lot of different information about these particular states right here. Now the census names units using the federal information processing standard that's called the FIPS code. You can see here I have a state name, but also each state has a uniquely identifying FIPS number. If you notice here, the FIPS code is actually left justified in my table here. You notice for a lot of the other numbers, such as population, um, population per square mile, they're right justified, meaning these are treated as numbers. Here, these are treated as text here, and uh, there's going to be a good reason for this here. You notice here, Alabama is 1, and we go all the way down to Wyoming, which is 56. There's other territories within the United States that have uh, designated census units. For example, America Samoa has 3. So you don't see 3 right here. We go from 2, which is Alaska, to 4, which is Arizona. The Canal Zone, which is in, um, well, which was in Panama, is 7. Guam is 14. Puerto Rico is 43. And the Virgin Islands, I believe, is 52. So these have places here within the Federal Information Processing Standard under the auspices of the United States. Now, when we go here, we can see, and you've seen it, I've labeled these by their FIPS code here, because when we go through and uniquely identify states, well, each state's going to have a different name. But for example, say I were going to get a list of all 3,000 counties by county name, and I were to go through and run a join or something like that using cancer information or some other large data that data set that I have, and I were to run to a run a run a join on these, that I'm not going to be able to do that because we need a key, and a key needs to be unique. Well, well, there's a number of other, there's a number of other county names that are not unique throughout the United States. For example, there's about 30 or 31 different Washington counties, the same number of Jefferson counties. So we can see, we're going to get a little bit, it's going to be a little bit confusing when we get down to the county level here. Now we'll zoom into North Carolina right here, and I'm going to turn off my counties and I'm going to I'm going to turn on my counties here. And when I zoom in here, you can start to see what we have here. Now, when we open up counties, they have a county FIPS code. Okay? And now basically when I look at this Lake of the Woods for Minnesota here in my attribute table, it's just a combination of my state FIPS and then my county FIPS right here. And you can see here for North Carolina, we can see Durham County is 37063. It's just what we call a concatenation. I'll turn this off here. For Guilford County, it's 37081. For Alamance County, it's 37001. You notice most of these are going to be odd numbers. There's going to be some cases where they are even numbers, where new counties, there's been new counties in New Mexico and Colorado, which have been inserted in there, or counties that have been renamed, such as Miami. Dade County has been, it used to be called Dade County, now it's called Miami-Dade County, so it's been given a new, um, it's been given a new uh, county FIPS code. So, but most of these are going to be odd numbers here. There's going to be a couple of even ones where they've been created since this FIPS processing standard has been used. There's not, that's not going to be the case for North Carolina here. But you notice this is just the concatenation of these. So we can differentiate Durham County, North Carolina with any other Durham County in the United States because Durham County is going to be the only one that begins with 37. Okay, A lot of other counties are going to end with 063, but Durham County is going to be the only one that begins with 37. So we can go through and differentiate it with that. Next thing below that, we have census tracts here. Okay, and I'm just going to zoom in further and further here. I'm going to go over here to Guilford County because I have some blocks for here. Okay, but when I look at Guilford County tracks, you can see what I have here in my attribute table here. So we have five units that make up the county, 
and then we have another six units that make up the census tract name. So you can see 02001. So now we're looking at Guilford County 37081. So anything, any census tract that begins with 37081, we know is going to be Guilford County. And then you can see the proceeding uh, six numbers that signify the census tract. So this is census tract 010601. 010602, 010702. Okay, and you can see these. And when I open up the attribute table for these here, and if you really want me to, I can go through and select these right here and look at the types of populations that we're looking at here. I can open my attribute table. Down here, I can just click on Show Selected. And you can see here the pop for 2007 is a few thousand here. So we can get an idea of the size and the number of people that we're looking at here. But below that, we have the block groups. Okay, so now you can see here when we look at these block groups here, and I'll go through and clear this here. There's about two, three, four different block groups within each within every block. So when we look at this specific one right here, and I'll uncheck my counties here, but 37081010601. This is census block number one. This is census block number two. Okay. And when I go through and select these, you can start to see the number of people that we're looking at for our block groups here. So we're getting to finer and finer enumeration units here. So we're looking at about a thousand people. So we can get pretty fine level of aggregation here. So we can get pretty specific at the neighborhood level so we can count a certain number of ages or race or income or whatever within a few hundred to a couple thousand people at this level here. Now, like we were talking about in class, census block groups level, this stuff in blue right here, for the census block level, this is where we're going to have most of our SF3 data. So we're going to have pretty much any information collected by the census. This includes country of origin, housing status, race, income, poverty. Anything that's collected by the census can be collected down to this particular level here. When we look at the block level, and I'll just show you what blocks look like because we're not going to do a lot of analysis with the block level stuff. For the block level is collected at SF1, which basically includes age, race, and housing status, I believe, or maybe even housing tenure or something like that. Very little information at the SF1 lit data. But anything we can collect from the census here, because these are going to be very, very important. Because when I go and download data from the United States web Census website, it's not going to be in GIS compatible format. I'm going to ask for block groups, and they're just give, going to give me a big Excel table where we're going to have a key. And these census FIPS codes are going to be the key here. So if I'm collecting it, say, at the census block group level, I'm going to have these numbers here. If I collect it at the census track level, I'm going to have 11, okay, 11 units here. If I have it at the block group level, I'm going to have 12 units here, okay. And if, if for some reason we get it at the block level here, we're actually going to have, if I click on one of these here, we're going to have 15 units right here. You can see block 2000, it gives me the block group here, and then the block number here, 009 here within this attribute right here. It's pretty where we're going to actually work with block level stuff, but most of the stuff we're going to look at is block group level stuff here. Okay, and I click on my block group right here, I can click on it here, and you can see the 12 units right here for the FIPS code. So in conclusion here, Basically, how we name units is just going to be concatenation from the larger enumeration unit. Concatenation means just a combination of all the symbols here, of all of the numbers that we put in here. So anything for Guilford County is going to be 37081, and then 010601, and then 1, and then anything else below that is just going to be numbers added on to that. So we can, we can uniquely identify any census block in the United States with a unique identifying information. And those can be linked back to information that we can query from the census, which we'll talk about in another tutorial.